A nice curtain. Does anybody want to buy the curtain? I'm going to let you guys unveil it when I say go. It's just a Raggedy Ann doll, only it has something else within it. And that's where the problem lies. There's thousands and thousands of these things sold, and have been sold, that young girls have played with. But this one's different. This one has caused havoc to a lot of people. Go ahead. Hold on. You just, that was like a buzzkill, you know, from what I was saying. You know what I mean? That's the question right when I'm unveiling it. <laughs> Who does that? I know. I noticed. You got you got a detention. I'm staying there. So, this is the doll. Was it possessed when they got it? It must have been. Because they didn't do any rituals, no conjuring. But what they did do, though, was they gave it a lot of recognition. They made it like it was a human. They used to put this doll at the breakfast nook and talk to her, the girls. There were two nurses. And they even bought her a little bracelet that says Anne on it. Anne. Like for Annabelle. And here's how they found out the name. When they first got it, they didn't attribute any name to it. But the doll was moving around the house. They left for their shift at the hospital. They come home and the doll's in a different location. The arms are moved, the legs are moved. The physical doll itself would be from his couch, now it's on the bed. So the nurses said, wait a minute, maybe the superintendent of the apartment is playing tricks on us. Maybe he's coming in here and changing the position of the doll to, to scare us. So what they did is they would put tape on the bottom of their doorway, and they would position their rug when you first walked in a certain way, and they said to themselves, we'll know if anybody's been in this apartment. Well, they come home one day, the tape is intact, nothing's wrong, they go in, the doll moved. Now it's in a different location. One day, uh, Lou, the, the uh, fiancé of one of the nurses, is sleeping. As he's sleeping on the couch, Annabelle's on the other end of the couch, sitting in the, in the couch. And he wakes up with a start, and he's sweating, and he's like this. He's like, oh, I had the worst nightmare. And so Donna says, well, what's the matter? What happened, Lou? I had the worst dream that this doll was crawling on my leg, got to my neck, and strangled me to death. He goes, that was bad. So then he takes the doll, he walks over, cocky, walks over to the doll, picks her up with two little flimsy arms, throws her across the room and says, that's just a raggedy end doll, can't hurt anybody. With that, seven psychic wounds appeared on his body, four on his chest, three on his stomach. You can see the blood come through the shirt, just like somebody took a scalpel and went, <laughs> or knife. And now the girls are frightened. Now they said, wait a minute, that can't be, that can't be this spirit of a young girl. But how they found out about the young girl, Annabelle, when he started calling it before Lou had his slashes, was the doll, they had the breakfast nook one day, and the doll's arms levitated onto the breakfast nook table. Now, those arms can't move, ladies and gentlemen. They're flimsy little raggy, uh, rag arms. But they went out to the table like this. Now, I'd be a little freaked, I don't know about you, right? They weren't freaked out, they were more intrigued. And one of the girls said to Donna, you know, I know a psychic. We can have a, a seance and find out what she wants to tell us. She's trying, trying to tell us something. And they did know this, this young psychic, and they brought her in for a seance. The psychic says that day, that night, she said, I'm picking up the spirit of a young girl that was killed out outside of your apartment complex, and she was hit by a car. She's a seven-year-old girl. Her name is Annabelle. 